हेलो एटर्स एंड वेल वी आर वंस अगेन हेलो एंड वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वेरी गुड इवनिंग बेस्ड ऑन द टाइम इन विच विल बी वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो होपिंग यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड फाइन लॉन्ग विथ मेम्बर्स ऑफ योर फैमिलीज एंड दैट यू ऑल आर फाइंडिंग टाइम इनफ टू एंड दैट यू ऑल आर फाइंडिंग टाइम इनफ सो एज टू यू नो गेट टू नो योर सेल्फ वेल सो एज टू गेट टू नो योर मेम्बर्स ऑफ मेम्बर्स ऑफ योर फैमिली वेल सो एज टू कल्टिवेट न्यूअर हैबिट्स एंड सो एज टू यू नो uh stay happy find reasons to stay happy well now that you have got a you know film festival of a kind of a thing coming up and there are so many different and good movies to be watched i guess it will be an exciting time for you all now coming back to history we were done with the civics part let us come back to history and when we come back when we are coming back to history we should uh, we'll have to remember that the britishers have already set up uh, control in india and they are uh, they have uh, they are slowly and slowly they are controlling or gaining access to more and more kingdoms of india more and more territories in india and that uh, they are now becoming some kind or they are starting to rule over india now what was uh, whenever there is some kind of a ruling going on there is some kind of an administration what does administration mean administration means uh, well uh, administration means that uh, how is or how do they administer or how did they administer the country now let us talk about the structure of the administration now before coming to the structure of the administration the administrative policy which was being followed by the company or that is the british british east india company it was having an objective or the three objectives mainly first was to increase profits from the trade so the east india company was actually or mainly a trading company and its uh, most important uh, role was that of trading and so as to get uh, this uh, they established rule over india for just one reason so as to increase profits from the trade so this was one objective second to increase the profits of the territories it held in india so uh, so as to get more and more money out of the territories uh, which they were holding in india or they had captured in india and so as to strengthen the company's hold on india now this uh, part will be skipping this part because uh, as it is this these parts are not there in the syllabus but let us come to the regulating act of 1773 but something to know why did the regulating act come to be passed the regulating act came to be passed because uh, this regulating act as we see and there was a misrule so the britishers were not ruling india properly and there was a lot and lot of loot going on this word loot was added to the british dictionary around this time so they were uh, nearly looting india and taking away its resources and giving back nearly nothing in return so as to control the malpractices or the wrong practices of the british east india company the regulating act was passed by the british parliament in 1773 so what were the features of this regulating act first feature of this regulating act is that uh, all documents concerning the civil military and revenue affairs of the company was to be pla placed before the british government so the british east india company was having civil services it was having the military and it was also having collection of taxes so all these documents and papers were to be presented before the british government so that the british government could could see if and whether the east india company was doing some kind of uh, you know wrong practices in this uh, in these uh, things that is civil military and revenue affairs second the governor of bengal was made the governor general of all territories made held by the british in india because as the number of territories was increasing it started with bengal but then they started increasing the territories and so the governor of bengal was uh, made the governor general of all of india now the governor general uh was to be assisted by um, by four members that was the council and he was he would sub, uh, supervise the governor general will be supervising would be supervising the administration of the bombay and madras presidencies presidencies meaning uh, states actually so right now today we have states and union territories back then there were presidencies different presidencies so the governor general who will be residing in calcutta he would be looking after the presidencies of bombay and madras also the act proposed setting up of the supreme court in calcutta so as to look up after the law and order the uh, control uh, to control the corrupt practices of the officials the act required every official of the company to furnish a list of all properties of the the officials held and explain when and how the properties were acquired so 
this uh, well so as to look into the corruption the act also made it compulsory for the officials or the british east india company officers and the different post holders uh, they would have to provide to the british government uh, details about all the properties they had all the money they had all the wealth they had and how they came in possession of that wealth but this also could not uh, you know uh, prevent the company officials from doing wrong practices or wrong deeds and that is why a uh, better act came after 11 years that was the pits india act 1784 now it was made so as to remove the defects from the regulating act now over here what happened was that the new act set up a board of counsel in britain to supervise the company's civil military and revenue affairs in india so previously it was the civil military and the revenue affairs they had to be uh, the papers of that had to be presented to the british government but now what happened was that a board of control was set up in the british uh, or in britain which would look up after the civil military and the revenue affairs of the east india company second the governor general was given additional powers including the power to overrule his council so we talked about this council over here council of four members but then the governor general was given the power so as to overrule the council that means if the governor general wanted he could not listen to the advice of the council or the four members of the board of or of the council the governor general's council and proceed on his own and he was made the supreme commander of the british forces in india so all the british forces who were then there in india he was made the supreme commander who was made the supreme commander the uh, governor general was made the supreme commander now next came after so after the pits india act a few other acts came up which were improvements on these acts there were the carter acts of 1813 33 and 53 so uh, all of these came and these all things will be you will be reading about later in history if you all take up higher history but then what were the agencies of the administration the company's administration is, in india was based on four agencies the civil service for general administration for looking up after the normal day to day activities of the administration or of the british east india company the army to protect the territories that the british held in india the police to maintain peace within the country so the army so as to um, get new territories police to maintain peace within the territory and the judiciary to look after the law and order so we'll be talking about the civil services the army the police and the remaining parts uh, later on in the next video lecture till then uh, start reading this chapter you know uh, you can also look up into different sources which are available in the internet and different books and i wish you all a, you know that you all stay well stay happy and that everyone in your member uh, everyone in your family also stays happy and stays well till then please take care and stay safe thank you